Hey guys, Blazin here. So today, in this video, I want to talk about Halo Infinite and how I'm feeling about it. And I also, this isn't really much of a surprise if you're following the channel, but I did skip out on Season 4, so I will be talking about Season 4 a little bit, and of course, this season, and just overall how I'm feeling about Halo and how I feel towards 343. I'm not going to go too fully in depth on everything, if not maybe most things, I just want to give my general thoughts on stuff. So with that being said, let's get straight to it. Starting off with Infection, which I only played a little bit of it. I couldn't play a lot, actually. I probably came in Season 4, like, really late. Like, like I got in, like, a, the last week of, like, Season 4, and it's just, like, that the playlist wasn't that populated. So I don't know how popular Halo Infinite's Infection is, but from the few times I did play it, it was just all right. It's not like the game mode blew my mind or anything. The only change I didn't like, which I saw everyone else, for the most part, didn't like either, was the fact that they changed the last man standing thing to, like, we're ahead of time limit, instead of just, you know, having the remaining time be the time limit. That was probably the only thing I didn't like about the, the new infection. Next, let's talk about Season 4's new maps, which were Forest and Scar, starting with Forest. Uh, Forest was just alright. I don't have really strong feelings about it. Obviously it looks very different with the, you know, the, as everyone's been pointing out, the Delta Halo look. As far as how it plays though, it's definitely like really social, so it's just like, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Overall the map is just, it's just fine. It doesn't blow me away other than the aesthetics. And of course the, the gravity thing that pushes you out under the, under the bridge near the waterfall is hilarious. And then there's Scar, which I don't play BTB a lot, so I did play a bit just to get the map. And you know, the few times I played it, uh, it is fun. If anything, I maybe uh, I might have found Scar, uh, the, that map, a little more fun than than Forest. I don't know if they've changed that map or rebalanced it. I I doubt it, because 343 doesn't really seem to do that with this game. A couple other things to talk about are the Quantum Translocator and Threat Seeker. Uh, I already made individual videos on those, so if you want to check out my thoughts on those, uh, the link will be down in the description. But to sum up how I'm feeling about them so far, uh, the Quantum Translocator I still think is just not a suitable power-up. However, I will say on Aquarius, it does work pretty well on Aquarius as like a power-up. But even, it, it's just a power equipment really. Uh, I still believe that it, you know, it should be nerfed. And again, if you want to see my full thoughts and analysis on it, the link is down in the description. And when it comes to the Threat Seeker, it's just, there's, I like, I don't care for it. It's a pretty boring piece of equipment. Uh, next thing to talk about is the Hazmat Armor Core, which once again, is just one of those things where it's just like, I, I really don't care. Like to me with, with Halo Infinite, like cosmetics is something that's just not going to keep me playing the game. I'm already satisfied with my drip, and it's just like, I don't... Like, so far the cosmetics that 343's been coming out, like, I've only changed my, uh, knee pads and a visor color. And then maybe I bought, like, an attachment thing that I missed out back in, like, Season 1. And that's really all I've done. And maybe s bought maybe a few weapon skins, but other than that, I haven't really, like, I'm just not interested in cosmetics, really. Like, cosmetics are not gonna keep me playing Halo Infinite. Which, speaking of cosmetics, I think we can uh, we can get into the Season 4 Battle Pass and get my opinion on that, which, once again, it, it might be just, uh, like, I don't care for it. I, I looked at everything in the Season 4 Battle Pass, it's just like, I don't care. I can live without it. Only compliment I can give with Season 4 when that was out was just how crazy uh, 343 went with the weapon models, finally. Took them long enough. Next thing to talk about are the career ranks, which, once again, <laughs> man, I've said this a lot already, I I don't care. Like, when this came out, a, a lot of people were hyped, I guess. I wasn't. Like, the career ranks are so pointless. It's literally a dick measuring contest. Who likes Halo Infinite more? All you get is fucking emblems. I mean, I, uh, I knew that was going to be the case. I, I saw it coming. The ranking system... Or, well, the, the way how you level or whatever, the, the social level, is pointless. It's just like MCC. It's just a dick measuring contest. Who the fuck likes the game more? 
It's not like Halo Reach or Halo 4 or Halo 3 where, you know, you get cosmetics. You get actual armor pieces for leveling up. So the career ranks really have no impact in the way I play or just, you know, just my overall enjoyment of the game. It's literally, it has zero impact for me. Last thing to talk about in Season 4 are the Forge updates, which I'm not going to go over everything. Um, it's no surprise, like, just like Halo 5, Halo Infinite's Forge is just kind of carrying this game a little bit. Aside from the competitive scene, Forge has also been kind of keeping people, you know, to, to keep playing this game. This game's Forge, I'm sure, is amazing, but unfortunately, I don't, I don't like Infinite as much as the previous Halo games, so it's not like I've been grinding in the Forge like I kind of would sometimes in previous games. But hey, I'm glad Infinite probably has the best Forge that, that topped Halo 5, which I thought would be impossible. And those are my overall thoughts on Halo Infinite Season 4. I mean, it, it seems like I didn't really miss much. Uh, I mean, I I like the map Scar. That was fun. Uh, the Quantum Translocator is awesome. And uh, the weapon models were really cool in Season 4. And the career ranks, well, at least they're there. You know, I'd rather have them be there than, than not, so... And of course, Forge updates are always nice, and that's it. Overall, with Season 4, it seems like I didn't really miss anything. Infection was nothing special, it's just adding back a game mode we've had since 2007, so there, there it is. And with that season done, we move on to Season 5, which is the season that kind of brought me back to at least try the game again. But before we talk about Season 5, I want to talk about 343 and how I'm feeling towards them. Well, I'm not as angry with them as maybe I once was, and I'm also glad the studio has gone through a lot of changes, thanks to Microsoft in some cases, but right now I guess I'm just apathetic. Like, if a new studio takes over Halo, whatever, and if 343 continues, which is the case right now, then it is what it is. It's like, I like Halo. You like Halo. But unfortunately, some of us, in, uh, some of us being me, is unfortunately like I'm just not of a fan of the company behind it. Like I still like Halo, but I don't like the company that's running it anymore. 343 has completely burned my bridge with them. And I was one of their biggest supporters. I bought the Halo 5 Guardians Collector's Edition. I bought Halo Infinite's Collector's Edition, the, the Walmart one. I bought Halo 4's Limited Edition. I used to be one of their biggest supporters. But after how Halo Infinite launched, they have completely uh, broken my trust with them. Now, like I said, I know the company has changed, but it's just like, they have a lot of work to do to regain my trust personally. And just because they've got new people, that doesn't mean it uh, it's automatically good because they'll have to work with the new team, you know? And it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a very long time before we ever see another Halo game. Obviously, Infinite is going to continue to get better, but that, even if Infinite gets to a point where it's like really, really godlike, it's not like it's not going to change my feelings towards 343. But hey, another reason why I've decided to give Halo Infinite another shot is because, well, why be mad at a studio where the previous people that used to work there are no longer there anymore? And, you know, 343 has gotten new leaders, and you know, 343, the company has been, you know, been, has gotten an overhaul from top to bottom. So, why still be mad at them when the original people at the top are no longer there? So, I guess in a way, I kind of am giving 343 a second chance, but not really. I'm still very, if not extremely, just, like, I'm skeptical. It's like, this new 343, quote-unquote, is like, you're, you're a stranger to me. I know Halo Infinite's gonna get better, but as far as what this new 343 is gonna do after that, who the hell knows. Now with that ramble out of the way, let's move on to Season 5. Alright, Halo Infinite Season 5. Uh, let's start with the, I guess, the Flood customization, which I don't think nobody saw coming. I don't think not even modders saw coming. Or maybe they did and they just didn't want to say anything. But Flood customization, hey, is a huge plus. We haven't seen anything Flood related in a really long time since like Halo Wars 2. One thing that's different about how 343 does the Flood with the, with this game, 
or like how 343 does the flood in general is that even I noticed this in Halo Wars 2 where it's just like I noticed there's like a like orange boils which is weird because every time like when I played Halo Wars 2 with the with the flood DLC honestly I mostly thought of the uh, the swarm from Gears of War that, that's what it more reminded me of I think if the orange boils with uh, were green I think would be better because even if you look back at like combat evolved it, especially it's more noticeable in combat evolved where there's actually like some subtle green glows instead or even the cutscene in the grave mine in Halo 2 anniversary there's more green glows than orange I will say to 343's credit though when it comes to like the head they make the heads look fucked up like you get to see the skulls and shit or even like Halo 2 anniversary like I'll give them that the head gruesomeness is is uh, awesome on 343's part. Next thing to talk about is the Season 5 Battle Pass, which, once again, I don't care. However, since it is Flood themed, it is really cool, and that already makes the season stand out. So, there it is. And it's only 50 tiers this season, which is a weird change. I don't know how I feel about the change, so I kind of don't really have an opinion on that. Next, let's talk about Season 5's new maps with Forbidden and Prism. So Forbidden apparently is going to be a competitive map. Uh, from the few times I did play it in Social, it's a pretty fun map. Might be one of my favorite new Social maps. Like, I like it better than Forest. However, if it's going to be a competitive play, I don't know how I feel about it. Because it, it's like, it's like the map has a good layout, but the problem is the scale. It might be a little too big for competitive, but who knows? I could be wrong. But I do personally like the map socially. I think I think it is a fun map. Like I said, I like it better than Forest. Next, let's talk about Prism, which once again is also a pretty good social map. Uh, I really do enjoy it. I didn't really get a chance to use the Needler uh, barrels or whatever. Of course, aesthetically is fucking genius. Having what looks like the Banish trying to uh, mine the Needler crystals, the uh, the Blamite. And I have a map set in a in a in a needler like Blamite cave is is genius. Also, I like from a, a lore perspective outside the map, you can see the uh, the SOS sorts of Sanghelios uh, fighting against the Banish, which is really cool. Next, let's talk about the extraction game mode, which so far as of the recording of this video and how the reception has been, uh, hasn't been all too positive. And I kind of somewhat expected this because when the game mode was revealed and then Tashi from like, you know, the dude who's in charge of HCS or whatever, said that the game mode, I think even, I think it's that's way in social, right? Where it's like, you spawn with one frag grenade for the game mode. Like, if you have to change your loadout to accommodate a game mode, I think that's an issue, like right there. I think that should be like an already like red flag if you have to change your, your starting loadout to accommodate a game mode. It's also possible that Extraction, it may not work for Halo Infinite, just for its maps. Like, maybe just Halo Infinite just isn't made for Extraction. I also think the fact that they had to make it so you spawn with one frag grenade for Extraction kind of tells me also a thought I've always had with Halo Infinite is that certain maps may have too many grenades on maps. Halo Infinite's maps are also, for the most part, really small. Like, if you've been playing, like... Halo 4 was kind of the last game they made where they made really good maps. And then Halo 5, they just made arena maps. They just made 4v4 maps. And if you look at Halo 5's maps and then go to Halo Infinite, they got, like, the overall map size have gotten smaller. And because the maps have gotten smaller, like, they're really small in Halo Infinite, the respawn timer for Slayer, for example, is still 8 seconds. The standard has always been 5 seconds. So the fact that it's still 8 seconds tells me that the game... Uh, the game pacing is still like really fast they did the same thing with halo 5 when slayer th they changed slayer and even objective to eight seconds i want to stop myself right there because at this point i'm really getting into like really like micro or macro depending on how you look at it like symptoms of halo infinite like as a as a as a the core gameplay like i know everyone praises the core gameplay but the core gameplay has its own issues that I don't think are really, like it's not obvious to the human eye. You have to feel it to, to know what I'm talking about. I would have to make a separate video explaining in detail uh, Halo Infinite's core gameplay issues. Like I said, it's not obvious, it's very like subconscious, 
And I feel like you also have to have prior like Halo experience, like uh, like from previous games, to understand uh, what I'm t uh, what I'm talking about. New players to Halo Infinite will have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. They'll think I'm crazy, but new players might feel it, but they won't know what they feel. Obviously, the new players they're probably gonna suck this game's cock because this is probably the best free to play game out there, and they've never played a Halo game before, so this will be their first one. Well, I got off topic. Where was I? Oh yes. Halo Infinite Season 5. Uh, what's next on my bullet points here? Oh yes, the cross-core helmets. Hooray, cross-core helmets. Let's go. I got nothing else to say on that. Just cool. Next thing to talk about is the Bandit Evo. And oh Jesus, this video is getting a bit too long. I should wrap this up more uh, quickly. Or maybe you guys like to hear me ramble. I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comments. But uh, next let's talk about the Bandit Evo. Uh... Much like I said with the Season 4 equipment, I made its own dedicated video. So if you want to hear my thoughts on the Bandit Evo and an analysis, uh, the link will be down in the description as well. But to sum up my thoughts here, I, I love this weapon. It is addicting. I find this far more addicting than the Battle Rifle. That's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, next let's talk about the Hero Rewards. So they finally added a bunch of rewards actually for the max level the hero level for the uh, career ranks or whatever so you can finally wear the mark 6 armor uh, from the campaign master chief's armor so that's great they actually give you a reason to to grind to the max rank but you also get a set of emblems and a couple of exclusive armor coatings so you get a pretty good like amount of goodies for reaching max rank so it, at least there is an incentive to reach max rank if you want but personally if you if you want me to grind this game more, I would like Halo 3's armor sets on top of those rewards. Like imagine 343's take on CQB uh, and EVA uh, and then like Halo 3 EOD on top of the Halo or the Master Chief Mark 6 armor kit core thing. I think it's a kit actually. That would be really cool. Because right now with the Mark VI uh, kit, all you do is just customize the colors. And of course you can have the armor itself. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure the Mark VI is just a kit. It's not like its own core, so uh, customizable armor is probably not possible at all. And of course, probably the biggest highlight of this season is the fact we got Forgeable AI for the first time in the franchise's history. This was like the logical next step of like on what to do next after Halo 5's Forge, which is Forgeable AI. This is something that I think Halo players have wanted since, like, Reach. It's always been a dream, and now it's a reality. Although one thing I feel like I have to mention is the hype doesn't seem as big as I thought it would. Like, obviously, for people that Forge and stuff are really hyped, but... I don't know, is it just me, or is the hype not as big? This might just be me, but I, I also feel like it might not just be me. Where it's like, I feel like Halo fans should be more hyped that we finally got Forgeable AI, but I think that also may speak volumes as to how much this community has shrunken. Because if I was still a hardcore Halo fanboy, I'd be giddying like a schoolgirl. And everyone else in the community, like, I'd, I'd hear some, like, the community would be fucking loud. I don't know, it, like, like, to me it just speaks volumes as to how much this community has shrunken and changed. Like, I feel like this should be more celebrated, but it's not. That doesn't mean I'm disappointed that we got it. Like, what, are you crazy? I'm just pointing out how it's like, it's not as celebrated highly as it, it probably should be. To, to me, it, ju it just tells me how much smaller our the I'm not going to say our, because at least in my opinion, uh, where, where I put myself, I kind of just kind of don't really, like I'm not really as involved within the Halo community as, as I used to be uh, years ago. I've kind of dissed myself. And what I mean by change is like, like if you're kind of an old head like myself, it's like, you know, if you remember those days back in Halo Reach and, and Halo 4, people were salivating and arguing against Sprint. And I know I'm bringing, I'm bringing Sprint up. Uh, I'm committing a crime here. I, I, I have to point it out where it's like, during the time periods with Halo Reach and Halo 4, people were fighting against Sprint. They were, there was a huge debate. And then when Halo 5 came out, and as time went on, and now here we are with Halo Infinite, those group of people that were screaming against Sprint are gone. Halo 5 started to bring in the people, at least that didn't mind Sprint or whatever. 
And now here we are with Halo Infinite, and you, you really don't hear about the sprint topic anymore. Because those old heads, the old fan base, a lot of it, like a lot of the old fan base is gone. And that makes me feel sad, and that makes me feel old. It makes me feel like I'm one of the last very, very, very few representatives that kind of represent just how... The, the old ways. And like, I kind of I feel like I represent the... how... the old Halo community used to be. I'm a fucking dinosaur. And that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I kind of went off topic, uh, quite a bit. Uh, not on purpose. I just wanted to give my thoughts on Halo Infinite Season 4 and 5, but this went on longer than I expected. So if you watched all the way through, uh, thank you. I really appreciate you for listening to my shit. And uh, I want to wrap this up, so if you liked the video, please leave a like. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content on this channel. And uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about, you know, what are your overall thoughts on Halo Infinite and just Halo as a whole. Like, what, what what's up? You, you enjoying Halo? Are you hating Halo? Uh, you can let me know in the comments. Uh, expect more uh, weapon analysis on the Halo Infinite uh, stuff, uh, the weapons. I've got quite a few in mind that I want to do. I'm not going to do every piece of Infinite Sandbox because I don't like this game as much. But I do have some ideas, and I know I've gotten requests to do some of the campaign variants of the Halo Infinite weapons, so I, I will do those. Those requests will be filled. And uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say. So, uh, until next time, peace. Boys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah.